Um, I'm going to try and speak to the theme that you have in front of you. And I'm hopefully going to try and address uh, not um, the subject from a point of view of coming and giving gyan, but raising a few questions which I think are important and sharing how some of us in the corporate world think about some of these issues, what have been our experiences. I discovered a wonderful poster, and I won't tell you where it was. Uh, you can keep guessing. And it said, Yahan gyan dele ki ijazat nahi hai, yahan sab gyani hai. Uh, for those of you who don't uh, understand Hindi that well, uh, you're not permitted to give gyan or uh, spew wisdom in this place because everybody is very wise. So I will, I will assume that that is true over here as well. Uh, and, and ask you a question, not to answer but, but rhetorically. When you think about uh, fostering change, when you think about championing excellence, how much of it is about others and doing things to others, leading them, influencing them, uh, shaping their perspective, and how much of it is about yourself? Yeah? The politically correct answer is both. The reality is most of us tend to think about very quickly how do we influence others, how do we get others to begin to think about it differently. And I'm speaking for myself, I'm not speaking for you. I'm speaking for myself and my colleagues that I've worked with for 30 years in different organizations. <laughs> Being in Andhabad and not uh, paying homage to Mahatma Gandhi is not done. Uh, the Mahatma said, be the change that you want. <coughs> How many of us actually are thinking about it? And I ask myself this question as I stand here in front of you. Uh, if I begin with myself, then perhaps I have a chance of making that change a reality. I had the good fortune of having um, uh, Dean Nathan uh, Noria in my office a few days after the announcement was made about his taking over as dean and as father. And I asked him, oh, what are you going to do in this job? It's like humongous and we weigh you down with a lot of administrative stuff. And he said something very simple and very powerful. He said, I will try and be more global. Uh, and being so, I will try to be the change I want in the institution. And this was stunningly humble and stunningly eye-opening. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with his writings, his work, um, and probably many of you might have even met him. For someone like that to make a statement like, and genuinely so, I think was, was to me an indication of perhaps learning something about how to think about these subjects and then do something about them. Um, equally when we talk about fostering change and talk about excellence, uh, in an institution of management, the mind very quickly goes to skills. How do we work with people? How do we work with issues? How do we construct the new world? How do we deploy the skills that we need and learn the skills that we need. And the question I have for myself and for all of us over here is, how much of this is about the skills and how much of it is about the purpose and the values for which those skills are deployed? Would you rather have in the competitions that you set up to engage in the next three days, somebody who's highly skilled in that field, but not necessarily aligned with the purpose and the values that you think are appropriate. Or would you send it for somebody, 
and I'm, I'm using the word settle in inverted commas. For someone who is aligned with your values and, and purpose, may not be God's gift to mankind in those skills. So that, that's again something worth thinking about because in our, our pursuit of these two years, uh, and some of you are in the middle of it, some of you are about to uh, run away from here in the next semester, uh, how well have we used this time and these resources and how well are we going to use them for something that really matters to us? I'll come back to the question of what really matters to us. Uh, I met a student at one of the, well, top 10, 20, whatever you want to call it, uh, business schools in the world. And after a session like this, we were chatting outside. And I asked this uh, young man, what do, you, what, what do you really want? You know, what is it that you really want? And he looked at me very, in a very straightforward way. There was no arrogance, there was no um, self-righteousness, there was no humility or, or embarrassment or, or anything. It was just a straightforward statement. And he said, it's simple. I want power, I want money, and I want it now. And I'm not sitting here nor am I asking you to pass judgment on the goodness or badness or the rightness or wrongness of his or her choices. But the good thing about it for me was that here is someone who has clarity. Do we have clarity about what we want? And I'm not making a virtue of his answer by the way. Um, do we have clarity on what really matters to us? What really, really, really matters to us? Or is this the great I'm a great fan of um, uh, wildlife, nature, birds, and I have a slightly untrustworthy colleague who's allegedly guarding my um, <coughs> camera and equipment, uh, which I carry everywhere. I'm very fond of wildlife. One of the things that I've learned is there's a lot in there, uh, in, in the world outside there, which you can learn from. And I was going to ask you the question, are we all in a part of the Serengeti migration? of the millions of wildebeest who all seem to by some common purpose go down a particular path and if you stop one of them and say, hey, Mr. Wildebeest, why are you going down this way? It would be a question that they might not have a very clear answer to. Uh, so how much of it is heard and how much of it is, is peer pressure and how much of it is the context that's been set up? We have a very interesting phenomena. I refer to little quarrels we have with uh, people like Professor Baba and Ayananda You have this delightful event which has been happening for many years now on business school campuses, which I call the annual Pushkar Mela. You know where Pushkar is? It's near uh, uh, Ajmer. And you have this cattle fair every year. And the most important part of that is the cattle auction, where all the cattle are paraded front of the potential buyers and then you have to bid for them and so we have something called the placement uh, festival which is like the annual Pushkar Mela and so obviously you've got your eyes on that and there is a, a kind of momentum to that auction where you know everybody paints their horns red and you know gets into shape and, and looks most attractive to the auctioneers and you know you, you're sort of making the best of that auction. Is that a sensible way to go about it? Are you getting onto a treadmill which doesn't really allow you the space for your own choices? And by the way, it's reverse snobbery to snap out of placement and say, I'm going to do my own thing. So there's again a different kind of, of logic that works on that. But my question again is, and even, even now, I wonder sometimes whether I'm very clear about what I really, really, and then I do find that answer resonating in me over time gives me a sense of purpose and anger, which I think is worthwhile. I spoke about the nature of competition. Uh, I am is a great place, I am the bar particularly is a great place for the team. And a lot of people compete very hard to get past uh, what Dr. Barba called the first hurdle of getting through the CAT or the 
nutrients process. Then having come into this August institution, compete very hard to get ahead. And by and large getting ahead, <clears throat> the pinnacle of that is the cattle auction. When the highest price is the tag that goes with the highest accomplishment for two years. Uh, I probably am very negatively biased, uh, so forgive me for that. But I'm teasing out that point to try and, and ask the question. Um, how do we compete? Is it a zero-sum game in our minds? That we compete and we will continue to compete as we become leaders of industry, leaders of institutions, uh, leaders of organizations, leaders in government, leaders in multilateral agencies. Will we compete with a sense of a zero-sum game? Or is there something different that we will bring to the perspective of pursuing excellence, trying to make things different? How much of self and how much of <coughs> others and how much of selflessness is there in our perspective of what really matters to us? It's the spectrum across creating financial outcomes in companies, across creating environmental outcomes in any, any space that you occupy in dealing with communities that you deal with. Will you be able to happily live in your penthouse in Manhattan, drive your Porsche and have a billion dollar bonus that comes from making, today at least, legitimate money by selling derivatives of derivatives of derivatives of derivatives, while there are large islands of uh, unequally stressed societies of the kind that we've seen in the Jasmine wave, we're seeing in uh, part of the uprisings that you have in different places, uh, the kind of challenges you have in, in South America and in Latin America. Uh, you will be able to do that and for how long? Will you be able to create islands of richness and prosperity? Uh, and little parks around our houses while the rest of the world goes to the dogs and the entire environmental balance goes up in flames and communities are fragmented. And it is not an answer for people like you who constitute the future of this country and perhaps even this world to say, listen, I'm, this is about me and I'm going to have a good life. You can't afford to say that sitting where you're sitting. That mantle of responsibility has already been cast on your shoulders by virtue of who you are and where you sit. Um, you can count your blessings for having that, or you can say, how did I end up here? But you're there. And people like us will pass away very soon. You're the people who are going to carry this mantle and the children of your children's children will look to what you did across this world and say, we have great legacy, we have great ancestors, or not. The final point that I did want to make was that one of the things that can't be taught is working with people. You have to learn it. Uh, you may get good inputs, you may get good advice, but unless you scrape your knees a few times and you really want to work with people, fostering anything or championing anything will elude you for time to come. And working with people is not manipulating. Working with people is genuinely relating to people. And in confluence, you have an excellent opportunity. You will win prizes which you can put on your CV. You 
you will learn a lot of things and not have too much to put on your CV. And the kind of competitive world that you are living in right now will push you towards certain choices. I would ask myself some questions there. And as I, if you do want to ask me questions, I will hang around here and be beaten up by you. Uh, before I get there, I just want you to think of one thing. We are at 2011 today. You are bright, bushy-tailed, aspiring, capable custodians of the future. In 2050, when you look back, what do you want to see as having accomplished? What will give you joy and meaning in terms of the lives that you have lived? That is where all of this has to come together. And events like conference will be experimental labs where you can play out a few scenarios for yourself and see what really gives you joy. So on that sober note, I want to bring you back to having fun over here. Enjoy yourselves, have a great time, and thank you very much. I'd be happy if you have any questions. For the night, for most uh, uh, inhabitants of uh, business school campuses, so you might be feeling a little overwhelmed by the challenge of having to ask questions. I'm not going to hold you to it. If you don't have any questions, I'd be very happy to say thank you, all the best, enjoy yourselves, see you a few years later, very successful and very happy.